Okay, this morning we're cooking breakfast in here in the garage. Some bacon in an old frying pan. The dog's half asleep. Anyway, we're gonna we're gonna fix the clutch on that. That's what we're doing today. Bacon. Okay, we got the plastic out of our way and we got the tire off, so we're gonna we're gonna go into the clutch and see what's going on. The symptoms were it works fine when it's cold, but as it warms up, um, it gets hard to shift and wants to start creeping. So we need to take a look at the clutch and see what's going on in there or what we think might be going on. Okay, we need to get rid of this footwell too, so we gotta get this brace out of the way. Give us some room to get in there. Clutch cover off. Top. Oh, I think I can just use a little ratchet wrench. Yeah. Okay. okay. In order to get that cover off, we also got to get rid of this little duct here because it's trapping our clutch cover from coming out. So loosen up. This boot screw. Going to pull a little push pin back here. If we can. Ah. Oh, God. Now I just need to set that aside somehow. Jenga! There we go. <laughs> suspect is the idler bearing here on the primary clutch is getting hot and seasoned up so it's probably getting dry it's supposed to have some grease in there and needle bearings so I think and they heard it squealing so I'm thinking that's probably what was going on and it's discolored a little bit. If you look in there, oh, you stupid. You look in there, focus right on that. I think it's getting hot and seizing up. And it's grabbing the belt, and when it grabs the belt, it keeps turning this, and it won't let, yeah. It actually feels rough. What it's doing is it's uh, grabbing the belt and it won't let you shift. So we're going to pull this primary clutch, pull the belt, we'll pull the belt, pull the primary clutch, um, take it apart and grease that idler bearing. Yeah, you can, you can hear it. It's rough. Absolutely. All right. Let's see if we can uh, get that belt off first. Okay. We can open this clutch up and get, the, get this belt off a little bit. There we go. 
Okay, so what I did there was I I took this tool, it's got a little cam thing, and you wedge it in there. Basically what you're doing is you're shoving this down and opening this up and you're spreading this apart. So it gives you more room to get the belt off. Anyway, that's what I did there. Now, let me back up a little bit here. Let's see if we can get this off. And these, on these 550s and 850s, where the, the engine sits linear and the clutches kind of sit back here, um, they're a reverse, they're a left-hand um, thread. They're not. So you got to remember that. But the trouble is, is getting in through here. We're going to make it. Uh, I think I still need an extension. So I think, I don't think this thing will reach in here. Oh yeah, well. Okay, there we go. Are you ready? Nope, nope, nope. We gotta go forward. Okay, reverse. Right, there we go. Take my own advice and go the right direction. Which in this case, right was loose. Lefty tidy, the opposite of what we're used to. So now, I'm gonna get my puller in here. Now this is going to be right hand threads. The puller is the same, but uh, is there everything else. I just got to see if I can get onto that. The axle is kind of right in the road there. Can't go there. Maybe I can go underneath here. Ooh, it's tight. Damn it. Let's see if we can get this thing shredded in a little further. Maybe we can. Okay. Okay, yeah. I can do that. Okay, this one is. The threads are lefty loosey righty tidy, but you still have to go to the right and screw it in to pop this off. There we go. Let's see if I can get that out of there. Nice. Okay. Uh, come on out of there, baby. All right. So this is what. We suspected is this one-way bearing here is really dry and rough. Hopefully, we can just take it apart and grease it. Otherwise, we gotta um, make sure that the surface that it rides on and the needle bearings are okay, and then we can just regrease it and reinstall it. But we'll take it apart and see what it looks like. And keep in mind, there is a an X here. And the X is right here where the part number is, but you got to put this back the same way. That way it's balanced. They do balance these things, believe it or not. Okay. This is a rev limiter. It's a spacer that actually keeps this clutch from only moving a certain amount. The clutch is a little wore out. It's got some slop there. A little slop in the the weights. No, it's not not too awful bad. I guess normal normal wear for about what, five or six thousand miles. Okay, what we're doing now is we're going to heat the spider up a little bit because there's Loctite when they put these together. So whoops, watch what I'm doing here. We just want to. Warm it up enough to release the Loctite. And uh, you don't want to get it too hot or you're going to melt your little plastic parts on your end of your spider here. The little slides, the little buttons. So you don't want to melt those. But you want to get it warm enough to get it off. You're just going to, you can use your hand here and you can feel. If it's, start, if it's starting to get too hot to touch out here, then... Probably better quit. 
get the big gun and our spider removal tool. Now this clutch, because it spins the opposite of all the other clutches, and because the the threads of the retaining in her left hand, this is also going to be the opposite of a regular clutch. You're going to actually go to the right to take the spider off. Aha, we got it. Okay, we got it free. You don't want to go anymore because you'll spin all your buttons out and they'll be flying all over the place. Don't lose the buttons. But keep in mind, this dude, it might be hot now, so just be careful. You don't want to burn your fenders. But I pull this back so I don't lose my buttons. I'm just going to spin this off by hand. And then that's going to expose our one-way needle bearing. Okay, pull this off. Keep that together. Set it back here. Now, there's our bearing. And it is very dry. And it is very rough. I hope it's still okay. Let's see if we can get it off. Actually, I'm going to do a little penetrating fluid. Wow, it's really, it's really struggling to come off of there. Hopefully it doesn't just fall apart completely when we pull it out. Yes, it's going to fall completely apart because it is toast. Yeah, it's toasted in there. It got too dry. And I don't think we'll ever be able to get it back together. Wow. Okay, we might have to order us a new one-way bearing or be like microsurgeon and put all them little clips and things back. <laughs> okay, we're just going to attempt to clean this up a little bit and see if this is still salvageable. Just got a little... Uh, Oh, what do you call this stuff here? The Scotch Bright pad. It's a red, and it works pretty good to clean and polish. Yeah, it kind of chewed on the back of that too a little bit. Let's see what this looks like. Let me get it off. Cleaned up here. Hmm. You know, it's not bad. It it did clean up pretty good. In fact, if I just keep dressing it, um, I think it's going to be fine. I'm just worried about the brain itself. But this is going to clean up. We're going to be all right. It just keeps getting better and better the more I work at it. So. All right, we'll move on into the bearing. Okay, so I found another bearing just like the one I got, but it's a lot better shape. But it is needing to kind of be put back together. So you can see there's these little springs, and then there is these little steel needle bearings. And so what I got here is one spring is missing, right? One spring's missing right there, so I gotta try to get that spring in that little spacer and have it in there orientated correctly. And then I'm missing a roller there, so that's what we're gonna be doing is replacing that roller and that spring. And uh, I think we'll be good to go because this bearing is in nice shape. It just it fell apart when I handled it, so I gotta put it back together. But I think we're gonna get it up and running. Let's get this back together and see what happens. Okay. We got this back together, thank gosh. So um, there's this little nylon washer that goes on first. Put that on there and then we're gonna set this on here and then I'm hoping I get it on right because it's a one-way bearing. It'll turn one way but not the other. So we'll reorientate herself here in just a second when we get this back on. Hopefully I get it on without screwing anything up, okay. I can't tell if I have that on there the right way or not. I gotta find out here real quick. Ha! So when this is running, it spins clockwise and I've got it the opposite. I gotta 
pull it back off real gently and swap it around because it it's the opposite of what I need to be. Hopefully when I pull this off I don't lose anything. Come on baby. Okay, pull it out. Don't lose anything. Turn around. Go back on. Gently. Helps if you talk to yourself. I don't have any bits or pieces laying here in the grease out of that. Nope, I look good. Okay, that goes on like that. And now, now I think we're going to be okay. Okay. Now that that's greased up, I think we'll be alright. We're going to have to reassemble it and try it out the alternative is we need a new clutch and that's about 500 bucks so maybe by putting that on there we bought this thing a few more thousand miles all right we need to put our little washer on and put her in the back all right put a little bit of blue loctite on here and you only need about enough to cover up three or four threads you don't you don't need a lot because this thing's going to get torqued down pretty damn back on here okay and we'll do the opposite direction okay now we want to torque this thing down with our spider wrench to 200 foot pounds Right first, I'm going to lubricate everything. Actually, everything seems pretty lubricated. It's got some dry lubricant, dry graphite on it. That's pretty good, but you can see this clutch is a little wore out, so we're just giving it a little more life. Not much, but a little bit more. Okay, remember how I said there was an X? Well, there's an X right there, and you want that to line up on your cover with our part number and date so that that gets lined up with our spring oh we need our little spacer our limiter spacer don't forget that that gets put back on Let's see here and turn it orientate us right here get our all of our little bolts started here Do a crisscross pattern, 11 foot pounds. Make sure you get them all tight. Okay. Okay, before we put our primary back on, make sure this is nice and clean, free of dust, oils. Also, wipe out the inside of your clutch tapered hole. Make sure it's free of dust and oils. Then, I'm gonna go ahead and start your belt on your secondary. Get it up and on there, and it'll also help just to open it up just a touch and let the belt go down in, and the belt will hold that secondary open just a touch, just like that. I don't know if you see that. Maybe we can zoom in just a little bit. Now, make sure everything is clean. Now you can slide your primary into your belt uh, get it going here there we go we're almost there okay slide your primary in your belt and onto and then you want to kind of seat this you want to just move it back and forth and it's going to kind of find its way and anyway you're on now it's just a matter of putting everything back. Uh, 
Okay, we're gonna get a torque wrench on that. And, and uh, in the book, it says these are like 48 foot pounds, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and just torque it to 60. Most all of these clutches, the smaller ones, um, I do at 60. Now the larger ones on the 1000 Rangers and whatnot, uh, those are like 96 foot pounds, but this one, 60 is sufficient, and uh, as in the bolt is plenty heavy to hold it. Anyway, so that's what we're gonna do next. Okay. There we go. All I did was just stick a nice soft rubber mallet in between. I can't even see that there. I just stuck a soft rubber mallet in between there so I had something to torque that against. But they do make wrench wrenches that hold the clutch too. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, orientate your belt so that as you're facing the vehicle, you can read the number. It's just a good rule of thumb so you always get it back on the same way. I think consistency is more important than, than whether the numbers are backwards or forwards. Uh, so let's start this rig. And we want to see if it's working. So let's back you out here. We're going to start it and we're going to watch the clutch operation and make sure it's all good. take this secondary bolt out and um, it, it has normal lefty loosey righty tighty threads I just got to get this rigged up so we can get that bolt broke I think I can do there we go I think I can do that right there wedge that hammer in there loosen that up take my zip gun and there we go get the gun out of there now I gotta be careful, there's lots of little things right here. But mainly we wanna get this off. Aha! See there's some shims in there. So we wanna take we wanna take one of these little shims out. And I think by taking one out, that's gonna let that sheave. No. Oh. I don't know, we're gonna try it. We're gonna take a shim out and see if we improve it. I can't. we're gonna find out. Might need to add a shim, actually, huh? I bet we gotta add a shim, not take one out. All right, let's try it again real quick. We either made it worse, or we made it better. <laughs> shim back in I took it too far so we're actually two shims now uh, hopefully two is our sweet spot
supposed to be. That's stopping now and not turning. Alright, we can put this dude back together. <laughs> 